<laughs> but um, tonight what I'd like to do is introduce you all to the uh, Mates Men's Network and something that is a passion of mine and we've been operating this for about 12 years now uh, in Australia and New Zealand. We've got eight centres now around New Zealand and soon we'll have 12, it's just growing very quickly. Um, our main centre will be in Hamilton. Our patron is Sir William Gallagher. The police and um, other organisations are just very supportive of what we're doing because they can see what's going on out there in the community, as, as you guys can, I'm sure. So I suppose we got people from all over, uh, not just Citizen Advice Bureau, is that right? Yeah. What we've found is these organisations are really supportive of our services and uh, we're getting a lot of referrals. Um, which is great because it's not easy to get men um, coming to meetings. But we average at the moment in Fakatani, I think, um, how, we, how long, how many are we getting here now? Between five and eight. And that's, that's really good because we've just started here. Um, it's very effective um, and what we do is um, just provide a, a place where men can come and share in a, in a confidential space, in a place of trust, and whatever that is that they need to share. And sometimes um, it's for the first time. You know, these, these men have amazing stories. And I think one of the powers of mates is the stories. You know, these guys, you know, the life experiences that these men have come to. And I think it's about when we when anyone really goes through a crisis, it's, I think one of the things, some of the things we want to have is to be heard. We want some respect. We want um, acknowledgement and, and possibly we want that safe place where we can go and, and share what's going on in our lives and maybe clarify a direction that we can move forward. So what we do with mates, and I'll just go through, I've just written some points here. Um, and we can go through those and just get an idea of what we do so that possibly we can refer to each other. Um, we work on a model of collective impact and has anyone heard of the collective impact model? Um, it's just a model that's been around for the last few years around the world. And basically it's about getting together agencies with a common agenda to working together to tackle a complex social issue. Okay, so what's going on, and I've seen it, I know you guys see it, there's a lot of competition going on, on out there in the community organisations. Uh, there's not a lot of um, uh, talking to each other. And what we are encouraging is that we get those organisations together um, and combat, uh, combat some of these uh, issues like family violence and male suicide. And we, we tackle family violence from, from the male's perspective. And what I've seen, there's a lot of, for example, women's refuges, a lot of women who come to those centres, and a lot of those women go back to the men they're living with. And what we're about is being there for those men, uh, educating them, getting them communication skills, so that um, when they come together, they can grow together rather than go back into that cycle over and over again of violence. So I suppose that's one of the main issues that we're talking about is violence and the external violence uh, that men can perpetrate and also that internal violence when they take their own lives. And over the last 10 years, uh, we've had 4,000 men officially in sui uh, com complete suicide in New Zealand, which is just incredible, 4,000 men and the lives that that impacts in the community, not just for a week, not just for a year, but for a lifetime. So I'm sure some of you here in the audience uh, have had that in your life at some level. And that's what I'm finding. New Zealand, you know, there's four million people. And if you've got 400 men uh, every year completing suicide, it's not long before everyone is going to be touched by that. So, just to go back through what we do, the first thing is about responsibility um, for these men to come in. And if that man 
can't take responsibility for his actions and for what happens in his life, it, disempower, it disempowers them. And so what we're about is uh, having that man take full responsibility, which empowers them for the choices they make in their life. And that's it's in itself is just very, very powerful when that man sees that the decisions he makes in life has an effect and that if he makes the right decisions, it has the right effect, or the wrong decisions, the wrong effect. And so just that one thing is huge. And so that's the basis level. And then we talk about environment. We talk about when you take responsibility for your life, then you are empowered. Everything that happens in your life, the people, everything that happens in your, in your life is your responsibility. So you, in fact, create your environment around you. And that's a real, another form of empowerment that we give these guys, to say that if you've got um, the people around you aren't happy, then it's about you changing what you're doing, um, to, rather than trying to change the movie already. It's, it's about changing yourself. And um, that's, the environment goes a long way. It goes into your health your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health. It goes into um, detoxifying, looking at those areas that are sucking from your life and looking at those areas that are adding to your life and sort of juggling that. So these are some of the principles that we have throughout the MATES program and they really work. They're just really, really powerful in that first meeting um, if you've seen the mates, um, we've got some posters there, but the mates um, logo, we have an arrow. And what I found over the years that when men come to these meetings in crisis, it's like they're in this black hole and that's like they have no way out. And we, we ask them, what is it that you would want out of you know, anything if you could have it? And um, they say they, they want a way out. They want a way out of this pain, this relationship issues they're going through with this crisis. They want direction and that's why we have that arrow. It's about giving them or helping them to find that direction in their life. Because a lot of these, these men are going around and around in circles and they're repeating the same cycle over and over again. So what we do is we get them connected to responsibility, realise that they create their environment, no one else is responsible for that. And from there, when their environment is actually empowering them, they maybe look at ask themselves the question, well, where am I going? You know, what, where, where am I headed in my life? Why am I here? These, these deeper questions. So um, at the meetings, we have two meetings. Um, we have an outreach meeting, which is for those men that are in crisis and we have a development side. And the development side is for those men who really want to grow within themselves and use, there's so much personal development programs and, and things that we have within MATES. I've been involved in personal development for about 25, 30 years now. And it's just, an, an, uh, just a, a huge passion of mine to see when a man gets hold of that, when the idea of MATES is for a man to be authentic to be real and for that it's about being the best he can be. It's sort of like a like a football team and we have the, um, the Chiefs football team uh, have been supporting us uh, as well coming to our events and that which is really cool because a lot of the blokes can relate to football. <laughs> well rugby, I've got to call it rugby haven't I? Um, so it's like we, we look at the men there and we say if, you, if every man was the the best player that he could be in, in that position, whatever that means, then that team is going to be awesome. It's going to be, you know, unfe unde undefeatable. Um, so everyone's responsibility and their direction in life is to become the best they can be as a man. What we do with the outreach, we, we, we have those men in crisis who may be thinking of suicide, who may be going through family violence issues, may be coming out of jail, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. They come to the meeting, they share their story. And through that sharing of story, they, 
it, it's, like I say, it sometimes is the first time, but they, get, they feel empowered by that, um, with, by sharing it with other men. It's something that a lot of men have never done before. And so we help them to get to a place of strength in their lives. And we, we offer them um, communication skills, life skills, uh, su support. And we get them to actually look for a, a direction and purpose in their lives. And a lot of that could be that it could be helping others. Because if someone comes out from heavy drug use and then cleans themselves up and then you know, starts feeling good about himself, he's the ideal person to talk to those people in this place. And it, whether it's a different culture or a different life experience, the, what I found is that some of the best men to relate to those, those men who are down there are the men who have been there. And so from that, they become helping the community and they become role models because they become responsible for acting appropriately uh, in, in the community and helping the community. It's such a simple process. Um, there are a lot of you know, processes like um, around the world that follow a similar sort of thing. Um, there's uh, the Paradigm, Paradigm Project in America, there's the Open Dialogue Program in Finland, which is basically getting men, or when, when, the, when a crisis happens, it's to get that man to that meeting as soon as they, that happens and to gather around him support, whether it be from their family, whānau, friends, or just a, a group. And they found that within a few weeks, that man can be back in the community. It's very, very powerful with the right support around them. So we, we get those men to come through and they might have issues with like drug and alcohol. So with the collective impact uh, model, what we do is we say, <coughs> who's the best person to help this to, to work with to help this person. So we're giving them su the support where they can talk and that personal development program, but then there might be a, a, someone, a, a, a service out there that can help them with, with um, getting over the effects of drugs. So we would refer them to them and we would both communicate to each other and, and what we're looking at is a win-win so that everyone wins. Um, so <coughs> evaluation about um, what's going on, and of course it's all confidential. It's just about making it a win-win. So we talk about openness and depth at the meetings, and basically that is just for those guys to take the mask off. You know, like there's a, a, um, a lot of, um, the word is bullshit, and <laughs> that's the typical Australian. I don't know if it's typical. Sometimes people sh shock when I say it, so maybe it's not a common New Zealand term, but um, it's about being real. It's about having a place where you can take that mask off. And, you know, because one of the, the things that um, men know if the other guy's not, not being real, because they've been there, they've done that. 